It's strange to think that over 99% of about 4 billion species that evolved on Earth are no longer around. In the last five centuries, around 900 species have gone extinct. And yet, some creatures seem to outlive everything. From a swimming snail that's been around for 500 million years, to a platypus dating back about 100,000 years, here are 20 ancient creatures that are still alive. Number 20. Frilled Shark Frilled sharks have been around for about 80 million years by experts' calculations. No one knows what their population numbers are like since they live at depths of 390 to 4,200 feet or so, and no one even knows how long they live for. But what we do know from fossils is that they may have once lived in shallow water before the dinosaurs were wiped out and started venturing into deeper water to follow prey. Experts believe they haven't changed much over the last 80 million years and have eel-like bodies with frilly first gills, 25 rows of teeth, and lengths of up to 6.6 .6 feet long. They are commonly found in the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans but are hardly ever seen due to the depths at which they live. In fact, whenever they are captured, they rarely live long because their natural environment is cold and high pressure. They have adapted over the years and now thrive in those deeper waters. If anything's gonna threaten their population in the future, it'll be us. Scientists believe that our deep water fishing industry could pose a threat. Although, for now, the International Union for Conservation of Nature states that frilled sharks are near threatened or least concern. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Gharial Gharial diverged from crocodilians over 40 million years ago, which is around the last time we shared a common ancestor with capuchin and squirrel monkeys. So, needless to say, they've been around a long time. Gharial are crocodiles with long, thin jaws that they use to catch fish. Males are discernible from females as they have bulbous growths on the tips of their snouts, known as gara. Funnily enough, Gara is also the name of a traditional Indian pot. Even though they've been around for tens of millions of years, our changing world hasn't suited them well. They're classed as critically endangered. While they used to live right across the Indian subcontinent, you'll now only find them in around five smaller populations in India and Nepal. We are actually mostly to blame for their desperate numbers. Their habitat has been altered throughout the damming of rivers, and we've used their nesting and basking land for grazing and agriculture. Gariel also can't walk well on land, so finding other waterways isn't as easy as it might be for other crocodilian critters. Overfishing may also cause problems for their food supply, and local fishermen sometimes hunt them for their gara, fat for medicine, eggs for food, and, strangely, their penises. Number 18. Komodo Dragon Komodo dragons are massive, carnivorous reptiles that grow up to 10 feet long, 330 pounds, and live up to 30 years. They are classed as the heaviest lizards on Earth and have been thriving on lesser Sunda Islands in Indonesia for millions of years. Although current research suggests their populations are declining, with some areas that used to see significant populations of Komodo dragons now having none at all. Even though female Komodo dragons are asexual, which allows them to reproduce, this particular reproduction method only results in sons. As a result, interbreeding is pretty common. Fortunately, we're making an effort to steady their population. The Komodo National Park was set up in Indonesia in 1980, which is a 700 square mile refuge dedicated to protecting their habitat, as well as that of many other species like marine life and the Timor deer. 
The park is also dedicated to preventing poaching. Unfortunately, Komodo dragons used to be targeted by big game hunters looking for trophies and by people wanting to use their skin and feet to make goods to sell. And those poachers are taking a big risk, as Komodo dragons aren't exactly friendly. People have been attacked and killed by them, with the death of a 31-year-old man as recently as 2009 on Komodo Island. Number 17. Shoebill Stork I often wonder how some species manage to live as long as they do, outliving many others. But when I see the shoebill stork from East Central Africa, I don't wonder that at all. There's mention of these birds by ancient Egyptians and Arabs, and when you learn their features and characteristics, you start to get a glimpse into perhaps why they've lived as long as they have. Shoebill storks stand at up to 5 feet tall, weighing around 12 pounds, with an average wingspan of 7.7 .7 feet. Their size is definitely a talking point, but let's not forget why they get their name. Their bills are huge. Their hooked bills are generally up to around 12 inches long and 5 inches wide with cutting edges. As you can imagine, these bills are capable of some serious chopping and crushing power when they descend upon their prey. Typically, they stand motionless for long periods so that their prey doesn't see or hear them. Then, in less than a second, they collapse onto their prey bill first and thrust at their victim with their beak and skull. Fish is their dinner of choice most of the time, but they also go for monitor lizards, crocodiles, frogs, rodents, water snakes, and even birds. Number 16. Bactrian Camel I actually have no questions about why the Bactrian camel is still alive. After all it's done to survive, it well and truly deserves to be here. The Bactrian camel is likely the ancestor of camelids, two humped camels that evolved in North America about 46 million years ago. There are only around a thousand today, but that's mainly our fault, not theirs. Bactrian camels are so robust they've withstood various droughts and food shortages. They are also capable of taking radiation from nuclear weapons testing sites in their stride. This might have something to do with the fact that they live in one of the most hostile parts of the world, the Gobi Desert. With limited food and water, they've had to learn to survive. They can drink salty or brackish water without getting sick, and the fat stores in their humps let them go many days without food or water. When they do find water, they're thinking about the future and stock up on huge volumes of it to replenish what their bodies lost. You can only find Bactrian camels in northwest China and southwest Mongolia, but unless we can stop hunting them, taking their habitat, and using their resources, we may not have them there for much longer. Number 15. Echidna Echidnas are not only unique in how they live and look, but they're unique in how old they are as well. Who would have thought that such a small creature native to New Guinea and Australia could have been around in the same form it is today for tens of millions of years? Echidnas are thought to have evolved up to 50 million years ago from a monotreme. They actually used to be aquatic, but they have adapted to life on land. Well, let's hope sharks don't figure that out, as I don't fancy running into a great white while walking through my local park. Echidnas are an unusual mammal in the respect that they are spiny, one of the oldest surviving species, and they lay eggs. Typically, females lay one leathery egg about the size of a grape and store them in pouches on their bellies. Ten days later, they hatch and drink milk from glands in the mother's pouches. Echidnas have so many interesting features, and some of them may have helped them live for as long as they have. For example, they have enormous brains for their body size, and male echidnas don't always wait until their lady friends are awake before they mate. Instead, they sometimes sneak into the burrows of hibernating females, who then wake up pregnant. Number 14. Musk Oxen just looking at musk oxen, it's not hard to believe they've been around for thousands of years. They even look prehistoric. 
Their ability to adapt to harsh conditions has pretty much given them the upper hand, allowing them to survive when many others haven't. Musk oxen grow up to about 5 feet tall, 800 pounds, and live for up to around 20 years in the wild. They spend their lives in the Arctic and explore the tundra looking for lichens, roots, and mosses to eat. While winter is challenging for most species, musk oxen can use their hooves to dig into the ground and eat the plants underneath. In the warmer months of the year, they'll eat grasses and arctic flowers. As you could probably imagine, living in the arctic would be pretty uncomfortable during winter, but they have adapted over many thousands of years. They have long, shaggy hair consisting of guard hairs on the outer layer and a shorter undercoat as insulation. This coat falls out during summer. They live in groups which protects them from animal threats, but not so much from humans. We have long since killed them for their meat and hides, so they are now protected in Siberia, Norway, and Alaska, where they live on reserves. Number 13. Chambered Nautilus it's not hard to be baffled by the chambered nautilus, which is pretty much a swimming snail that has tentacles. Even though it's been around for 500 million years, it hasn't changed all that much in that time. It's managed to survive some of the worst extinction events in the world, even though it has poor vision and is very slow to age and move around. Scientists believe the reason it has survived so well is that it readily adapts to survive. They aren't as easily affected by environmental changes as other species. Also, when their young hatch from eggs several hundred feet below the surface of deep waters, they're basically like smaller versions of their adult forms. So their young aren't typically as vulnerable as the young of other species. Chambered nautilus have incredibly hard shells that provide them with protection, and as they are cold-blooded, they have control over their metabolism to allow them to survive during some pretty challenging world events. Of course, they do face threats, though, namely us. No laws exist to protect them, and many humans take their shells for decoration. As a result, some awareness groups believe they are becoming incredibly hard to find. Number 12. Babarusa I've never even heard of the Bubarusa, a wild type of pig, and experts believe they've been around for over 35,000 years. In fact, prehistoric paintings were actually found in caves on the island of Sulawesi in India from about 35,400 years ago. But I think I can forgive myself for not knowing what the Bubarusa is, because they actually aren't all that well known. Except, of course, amongst biologists and wildlife traveler groups. They are only found on remote forested islands, so they've basically evolved in complete isolation over these years. They are known to live on Sulawesi and nearby islands, living in large herds in what is now a protected area. Their most notable feature is their tusks, which only males have. They have two upper canines that form through the skin of the snout, then curve back into their forehead. Their lower canines grow upwards. Out of all mammals, they are the only ones to have canine teeth that grow vertically. Surprisingly, even after research, no one really knows what those tusks are for. Males don't use them to fight or mate, so it's presumed they're a form of protection for their eyes and throat during fights. Today, there are less than 10,000 Bubaruses in existence, and they are listed as vulnerable. As you can probably guess, their numbers are due to habitat loss and poaching. Number 11. White Rhinoceros not to bring down the mood or anything, but white rhinoceroses descended from the Ceratotherium praecox, which lived about 7 million years ago, and we're just years away from seeing the extinction of some of them. We're probably going to be the last generation to see a few of the subspecies alive. White rhinos are among the largest land mammals at up to 6 feet and weighing between 3,000 and 8,000 pounds, but their size is not enough to protect them. Decades of poaching for their horns have resulted in just two northern white rhinos left, both females. They receive round-the-clock guarding in the Old Pajita Conservancy in Kenya. Southern white rhinos were thought to already be extinct in the 19th century, but dozens of them were found in South Africa. 
Thanks to over 100 years of management and protection, we've managed to bring their numbers up to about 21,000 in private game reserves and protected areas. Out of all five rhino species, southern white rhinos are the only ones not classed as endangered. The majority of them live in Kenya, South Africa, Namibia, and Zimbabwe. Northern white rhinos might be a lost cause, but we've still got some time to save the rest after having already survived for so many centuries. Number 10. Jellyfish if you were to ask any marine creature for directions in the ocean, you'd ask the jellyfish. They've been around for at least 500 million years and potentially up to 700 million, which means they've had plenty of time to map out the water. After all, they are found all over the world in both surface waters and the deep sea. Jellyfish, which also get called sea jellies, are free-swimming marine animals, but some actually anchor themselves to the seabed and stay there. To eat, they use their tentacles covered with stinging cells to capture prey. They also use these same tentacles to protect themselves, which is probably why they've managed to live for so long. Compared to other marine creatures, their life cycle is incredibly complicated. The sexual phase is called medusa, and this produces planula larva, which disperses widely before becoming sedentary polyp. Then, eventually, they become sexually mature. The fastest growing stage is the medusa, which matures in just a few months months, then dies after breeding. At the polyp stage, where they are attached to the seabed, they live much longer. How absurd! Number 9. Horseshoe Crab I didn't think there could be many animals alive today that existed before the dinosaurs, but the horseshoe crab is here to prove me wrong. They've lived for over 300 million years, which means they are older than dinosaurs. They also look like pretty prehistoric crabs, but they are actually related more closely to spiders and scorpions than crabs. These unique little guys have 10 legs they use to walk on the sea floor, hard exoskeletons, and three sectioned bodies. The rounded shape of their head is a bit like a horseshoe, hence the name, and the largest part of their body has all their biological and nervous organs. A large plate protects their heart, brain, nervous system, glands, and mouth, while their heads protect their eyes. They have nine eyes all over their bodies and light receptors near their tails. The two largest eyes are quite useful for finding mates, while the rest help them notice moonlight changes and movement. The middle section of their body is the abdomen, which has a ridge down the center and spines on the sides. The spines protect the crab. Then, finally, the last section. This is the tail, known as the telson, which is pointed and long. Horseshoe crabs live along the North American coastline in the Atlantic Ocean, and there are also other species in the Indian Ocean and the Pacific Ocean. Number 8. Coelacanth for many years, we didn't know much about coelacanths. What we did know just came from fossils, as most researchers believe the 90 species of them went extinct about 65 million years ago during the Great Extinction Event. But as it turns out, we actually have two living species. Coelacanths do look like normal fish, but they really aren't. First and foremost, they have a rostral organ in their snouts that forms part of their electrosensory system. No other living vertebrate has such a feature. However, that is not all. They have a hinge in their skull that lets part of their cranium swing upward to make their mouth gape open wider. This, too, is not common or existent at all in other vertebrates. The first living coelacanth was discovered in 1938 and went by the scientific name Latimeria chalumnae. After that discovery, we only thought they existed in the western Indian Ocean around the Comoros Islands. However, in 1997 and 1998, they were found almost 6,000 miles away from the Comoros Islands in Indonesia's northern Sulawesi. They had genetic differences to the first discovered coelacanth, which led researchers to believe the two populations had spent millions of years apart from each other. Number 7. Sea Lamprey 
Whenever researchers discover creatures from millions of years ago, they're usually pretty excited. They want to know how they've lived for so many years and how they have evolved. But when it comes to the sea lamprey, the research looks a bit different. They have an exciting history, but they could also be America's first destructive invasive species, according to the National Ocean Service. Sea lampreys have lived for about 340 million years and haven't really changed in that time, even through four huge extinction events. Lampreys have no scales, fins, or gill covers, and they don't have bones either. Instead, they have cartilage. This unique vertebrate species also breathes through seven pairs of small gill openings positioned behind their mouths and eyes. Perhaps the most obvious feature, though, is their mouths. They have a suction cup mouth in a disc shape with sharp, horny teeth. They use their mouth and teeth to latch onto fish before rasping away the flesh of the fish with their rough tongues. Before long, they're feasting on blood and body fluids, consuming about 40 pounds of fish each year. Even though their numbers are down, they are wreaking havoc in places like Lake Superior, Lake Erie, and Lake Michigan. So much so that control measures are in place to stop their upstream movement and save trout, perch, whitefish, and sturgeon populations. Number 6. Giant Freshwater Stingray Giant freshwater stingrays were first identified in 1852 in Indonesia by a Dutch ichthyologist called Pieter Bleeker. Strangely, though, this discovery was forgotten about and the stingrays were identified as a new species over a century later in 1990. They are found in the rivers of Thailand and the Kinabatangan River in Malaysia. Out of all possible places to see them, the most common are in rivers with sandy bottoms at depths of up to about 65 feet. Females are sometimes found in estuaries, and researchers believe they give birth in brackish waters for unknown reasons. When you compare the giant freshwater stingray to other stingray species, they are quite similar. They have long tails and large oval shapes and can weigh up to about 1,300 pounds while measuring approximately 118 inches long. They also have two pelvic fins on each side of their tails, a venom gland, and flat bodies with mouths on the underside with tiny teeth. As we've only recently rediscovered them, there's still so much that we don't know. For example, we can only guess that they develop similarly to other stingray species, and we don't know much about their mating systems either. Most captive breeding programs have been stopped, and pregnant females would only give birth to up to two babies in each breeding event. Number 5. Platypus I love platypuses. It's like Earth's creator had leftover parts from other animals and decided to throw them all together. They have webbed feet, a tail like a beaver, a duck-billed nose, dense waterproof fur, and venomous spurs. I mean, how mismatched can you get? It's so confusing that scientists and European naturalists actually believed it was a fake when it was first discovered. It's thought that this creature's age has something to do with these many weird, wonderful adaptations. Fossils of the platypus we have today have been found dating back to around 100,000 years ago during the Quaternary period. It would have faced many challenges, so maybe all these unique features are what helped it to survive throughout the years. Today, we have a mammal that is just out of this world. It lays eggs, uses its feet as rudders in the water, and has a bill that houses its ear openings. It also uses its tail to store fat reserves for a rainy day, and has sharp claws to help it burrow on land. Oh, and if that's not quite enough, male platypuses have a horny spur on their ankles. This connects to a venom gland. You'd almost think it was a reptile. Funnily enough, their skeleton does have many similarities to our modern-day reptiles. Number 4. Elephant Shrew Elephant shrews are small mammals related to sea cows, aardvarks, and elephants with an evolutionary history dating back to about 33.9 million years ago. Well, that's what some research states, but more recent studies have shown that the remains of the first elephant shrew found in the Wyoming Badlands could be 54 million years old. 
But what we know for sure today is that they come from a single family called Macrosolidity, which has 19 living species within it. They have long, pointed heads, trunk-like noses, long legs for their size, and long, scaly tails. They also hop along like rabbits and look very rodent-like. Elephant shrews grow up to about 12 inches long, not including the tail, and weigh up to about 24 ounces. They live in dense forests and open plains and are native to about six countries in Africa. Even though they can breed up to five times a year, that doesn't mean there are massive populations of them. Some species of elephant shrews are experiencing population decreases of up to 30% in the last decade due to their fragmented forest homes and and fires. Depending on the species, there can be tens of thousands left, or as many as a few hundred. Number 3. Pelican we expect animals to evolve over millions of years. I mean, just look at how far the human race has come. But compare the fossil of a pelican found from around 30 million years ago to a more recent skeleton, and you'd have a hard time seeing many differences. In 2010, an old pelican beak fossil was found in southeastern France, which looked like the seven modern pelican species we have today. Usually, beaks don't appear as fossils, so scientists were given quite the treat when most of the pelican's head was found in fine-grained limestone. They said it looked just like the modern Great White Pelican. Scientists believe the reason there hadn't been much of a change was that the beak had evolved as much as it could. It was perfect for flight and eating. So there may have been no reason to adapt. They may also be slow evolvers, which means they couldn't rule out evolutionary changes in the future. Today, and probably like pelicans from all those millions of years ago, they use their beaks containing flexible pouches to capture prey in water. They will then spit out the water before eating. It's quite clever, really. Number 2. Alligator Gar Alligator gar fish are the largest species in the gar family and are also one of the largest freshwater fish in North America. Their conservation status is of least concern, and this is quite surprising given that their fossil records date back to over a hundred million years ago. It seems like this fish definitely knows how to thrive. Alligator gar are brown or olive and are shaped like torpedoes. They have broad snouts, long, sharp teeth, and it's thought that they can grow up to 10 feet long. Most populations of alligator gar exist in the southern portions of the U.S. through to Mexico, with some previous habitats wholly wiped out through destruction, culling, and unrestricted harvesting. And you can't blame people, really. For a long time, they were described as being a trash fish or nuisance species that nobody wanted. State and federal governments even had elimination in their sights. However, in the last few decades, we've come to realize that alligator gar are actually quite important for our ecosystem. So now, there are some protective measures in place for them, and they are cultured in some areas for stocking, research, and consumption. Number 1. Crocodilians Crocodilians don't just look old, they are old. They have lived through every world-changing event for the last 230 million years and have outlived ice ages, dinosaurs, and so much more. No wonder they're so grumpy today. It's crazy to think what they would have been through. Crocodilians is the name given to crocodiles, alligators, gharials, and caimans. They live for decades, depending on the species, and all of them are carnivores. When you see fossils and other evidence of crocodilians from many millions of years ago, you may not think they look much different than they do today. The truth is, we don't know for sure, and we're discovering new things all the time that say otherwise. For example, in 2020, scientists began to wonder if some crocodiles may have walked on two legs rather than the four they use today. They found fossil footprints in South Korea that pointed to this being the case. The size of the tracks and their spacing showed a reptile of up to 12 feet from approximately 106 million years ago, which would have been accurate with some modern-day crocodiles. There's also been evidence of another crocodile ancestor, the Carnufex carolinensis, nailed it, moving around on two legs, adding more weight to this curious piece of information. 
Many animals are on the brink of extinction, like the Javan rhino and even the mountain gorilla, so we can expect some extinction events in our lifetime. But some creatures have been around for so many years, it's likely they will always be here. Which animal surprised you the most? Do you think any of them will go extinct? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.